welcome to A Window to Born. I'm your host, Mavis Robinson. This is my co-host, Captain. And, uh, and today I'm welcoming John Carafoli to the show. John, thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I'm so, I'm so pleased that you're here because um, we're here. You're, you're, you grew up in Bourne, is that correct? I grew up in Sagamore. Sagamore, okay. Yeah. So the yeah, people from Sagamore like to, like to make the distinction. <laughs> yes. Well, it's the village of Bourne, right? Right, yes, yes. <laughs> Yep, so you, you grew up in Sagamore, um, and you came to my attention because of um, your, your recently published book, Great Italian-American Food in New England, which, uh, we, which we actually um, featured a program on at the Bourne Historical Society. So I really, I want to talk to you about your, your childhood in, in Sagamore, but I also want to pick your brain about your experience as um, b being an author. So, uh, so <laughs> you're, you're an author, you're a food stylist. Tell me more about... Uh, All right. Well, I started off, uh, I left Cape Cod when I was 20 years old. I packed a bag and went to Chicago. Okay. And I, my first job was with the University of Chicago Press. I worked as a designer. Yeah. And um, then from there, I went and worked in publishing houses uh, as designer. Um, I continued my painting because I was a, I went to the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. Oh, okay. And um, then went off to uh, one of my, I worked for several magazines. One of them was Playboy. Okay. And um, I was an art director there. And life went on. Now, it, when, and one of, the, one of the credits I find most interesting is food stylist, because that's <laughs> one that you don't hear a lot. What, what's a food stylist? <laughs> Well, a food stylist is, is a person that makes food for photography. Okay. For 18 years, I did everything that, that you saw in the shops and on TV for Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're the one who makes those donuts look so irresistible yes. and delicious. Yes. All right. right. All and right. Um, then I got to the point where um, I had, I worked in New York. I had an apartment in New York and I worked back and forth and I, had some really big clients. I had Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, um, Level Vodka, and then I became the f the liquid person, the one who could do the these beautiful drinks. Okay. And I, I really liked it. Yeah. But it was uh, also very um, it's very demanding because the one of the last shoots that I was on was uh, Level Vodka, and it all I had what I did was to spritz a martini glass and put the uh, garnish in. So I was at the, at the studio at 8 o'clock in the morning. I, everybody was there. I had all these garnishes laid up. I had the drinks, the sh uh, glasses. And it went, that shot, that photo shoot went until 2.30 in the morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was because the photographer was a fashion model, mm -hmm. and they had already d shot the fashion, mm -hmm. the people holding the glass. And what we did was put the glass in front of these portraits, and then, s then, then they put the real things together. Mm -hmm. And all I did was the glass. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of complications because he had an issue with glasses. But anyway, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry to get into this. No, but no, no, that's no. The I way it is. <laughs> No, I, I find it interesting, you know, all these, uh, to find out sort of the behind the scenes, uh, you know, these things we sort of take for granted, that you open up a cookbook and the, you know, the, the recipe looks just so wonderful and delicious and, you know, everybody on Instagram thinks they're a food photographer. Yeah, but they no do. Nothing looks quite as good as, uh, as when, you, when you see it in a book. So. Well, I wrote the first book on the subject. Oh, okay. Which is? Which is right here. The History of Italian American, no, no. that's <laughs> the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Food photography and styling. Okay. And I did this, and it was the first book on the subject. Mm -hmm. So when um, when I did it, uh, I was criticized for blowing the secrets. Okay. Well, you know, there are no secrets because it's using common sense. And if you've got some talent behind it, I have an art background, so I think of these photographs as paintings. Yeah, yeah. But so. you're like the magician telling people how the trick is done. <laughs> <laughs> Techniques. So the other, the other magicians were not, uh, not happy. Um, but so I do want to talk about this, yeah. this newest book because right. um, this book truly um, touched me. Um, and and uh, both as, you know, I mean, just as a local person that you, it's, it's really a, a, an incredible combination of local history, 
personal memoir, um, memories and interviews from other people, and this is the book that, um, that really opened up a whole new um, section of local history that I never knew about, and that was, or that I didn't know much about, and that was the Italian American community in um, Sagamore Village. So that's, that's where you grew up, and you write very um, evocatively of that in, in, this, uh, in this book, which is Thank you. a personal story about you in some ways. So, so tell me some of those, uh, those memories. I mean, I, I have in, in my mind a, a picture of you in these various kitchens of these, you know, um, grandmothers, aunts, these Italian female cooks, and sort of learning next to them about, uh, about your heritage. Do you, uh, can you share one of those memories with us? Well, yeah, um, my grandmother, we lived, my father, mother, and my aunt, we lived with my grandmother and grandfather. Okay. And they had just, they, not had just, they were, came from northern Italy. Okay, so Bologna. they were, they spoke Italian. Oh, everybody spoke Italian yep. in the house. And yeah. so they immigrated through Ellis Island with? No, okay. they, I, that was my, I did some research on yeah. that. <coughs> Excuse me. They came through Boston. Okay. I found they came through Boston. Yeah. Um, and so what happened was uh, the first Italians came in the late 1800s mm -hmm. to build, 500 of them came to build the canal yeah. with wheelbarrows and uh, shovels. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of that in the book. Um, and then they were treated really badly. They weren't being fed, they weren't being paid, and then they went into the, into the village of Sandwich and sort of everybody panicked, you know, I mean, the whole thing with immigrants, yep. you know. They were the newest. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they left, and then later the Keith Cow Works came into being, and people knew of it in Italy and would come. Mm -hmm. And it would, they came from, most of them came from the north. Okay. The north section. But, yeah. Uh, and then that's how the, the Sandwich and Sagamore uh, community started. Yeah. Um, yeah. There were, they, you know, everybody had, they either had a pig in the backyard and they killed it, you know, mm -hmm. slaughtered it in mm -hmm. the fall, used every part of it. My friend who is past, uh, Nello Bellagno, Oh, he has a story that, you know, he smelt the, you know, they'd have ha hang the sausages in the kitchen yeah. or down in the basement, and it would smell of garlic all the time. Um, but they were great. My grandfather had his own vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, most own of vineyard. most of the people. So right? he was growing his own grapes. Oh yeah. In Sagamore. Yeah, wow. but they would import some of them. They would have uh, a supplier where everybody in the village would go and get more grapes because yeah. they didn't have enough to make their own wine. Yeah. Some of them didn't. But do, do you remember your grandfather making wine in, in the basement or did you, did you just um, see it? I knew this, I could smell that this fabulous smell and he would, for instance, <coughs> excuse me, he would uh, take me down, like for instance on a dinner or something, mm -hmm. and he would cook in the coals of the fire down okay. in the furnace. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I would watch him and what, now, he, what's he cooking? Is a steak. Okay. Uh, you know, in, <laughs> yeah, in, these, yeah. in the grill. Yeah. And um, then um, he would walk me over and pick a bottle of wine and we would walk up the stairs and uh -huh. he would have the wine. And I, I have been drinking wine since I was, I think, five. Yeah, yeah. Four or five. <laughs> Do you remember the taste of your grandfather's wine? Yeah. I how mean, does, how it does it like, compare? Is it very sweet? Or? No, it's, it's rustic. It's good. Uh -huh. It's a, just a good table wine. Okay. okay. And he, they used to put a little sugar in it for me, and I would dunk the horn bread, which I talk about in the, in the, uh, in the book. Yeah. Now, tell, was, tell me about the horn bread. What, what is that, what is that tradition? The horn bread is originally, it's a recipe from Bologna, mm -hmm. Italy. And um, it was baked in the basement of Louis Market. Okay. Lots of people talk about Louis Market. Was that sort of the, the center? The, okay, that, that was really a hub of activity for the community. Oh, yeah. They had all Italian products. Okay. And um, I would go in, and John Bueller was married to 
Louis Consoni, who owned Louis Market, okay. and he took it over after that. Okay. And I have a there's a wonderful story about my friend uh, Genevieve Mooney and Saloni. Mm -hmm. uh, she she gave me this quote, and it's in the book. And she said, "I know when I was my mother told me when I was born that they were workers." We lived above Louis Market, and there were workers going down Adams Street, singing a old Ita singing Italian songs as they went to work at the Keith Car Work at oh, wow. seven o'clock in the morning. And at that time, my father, Augusto, was baking bread in the basement. And this is why I love bread and music, or oh, music wow. and bread. Wow, to be, sweet? to be born into that, yeah, 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 the smells and the sounds. I just did a, um, another, a book signing at the Sandwich Public Library and she was there, she's nine, she was sitting in the front in a wheelchair, she's still bright, and she was right there in the front, so and now, she's 90, 96. And as part of the process of writing this book, did you did you interview people um, who still live in, in Sagamore, or was, was it mostly from your memories? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I have been collecting this for years. Yeah. I've been working on this uh, uh, practically, I could say, all my life. Mm -hmm. Because um, that quote from Genevieve Mooney Anceloni, I did that, I realized I did that in 19... 1999 or something okay. when I was talking with her. Yeah, yeah. So you, you sort of have been collecting these uh, these stories and yeah, yeah. yeah. Now and now they're they're all together in, in this incredible book. I have to. I, one of the ones that I really enjoyed was um, you told a story about um, of. Um, was it Ro uh, Rosa or Rosina? Rosina with Buffetti. the mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who lived next door to me. I think I had just started, well, I was cooking, I started cooking when I was young after my mother died. So it, I saw her come alongside of the house and she had this, her dark socks mm -hmm. and a long <laughs> dress with yeah. an apron. And the apron was full of uh, mushrooms. And, um, that she'd collected from the woods? Yeah. Or did, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just wild mushrooms. <laughs> and so I said, oh gosh. And then I, wa I, went into, I went into the house and I watched her. She's picking them. And so I decided that I'm going to pick mushrooms. So I went the next day and I picked all these mushrooms. She's t picking the good ones out and the bad ones she's throwing away. She's doing this and this. And she said, now you go home and you cook it with a parsley, a, 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 a couple of leaves of parsley, a silver spoon, and uh, a, lo a piece of bread. So I ran home, not thinking, I, be, I just did it. Yeah. And um, so I went back to her and I said, Rosina, I understand about the parsley, if it turns a color, if the silver you know, tarnishes, but what about the bread? Oh, if you give the bread to the chickens and the chickens die, you don't eat the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was a wonderful woman. Yep, yep. They all were. Do you have any recipes that you still make that you learn from uh, from from those days? Oh yeah, oh yes. Um, there's something called uh, Savor, and my friend Mafalda Maiolini. Mm -hmm. Mafalda, um, I love that name. <laughs> Muffy, they used to call him Muffy. Muffy. <laughs> she, we became really good friends, and um, she would do. And I wrote this for the New York Times. It's, it was in the New York Times, and it was. And I felt it. W it should be in the book, and it is. Mm -hmm. And it's done with dead ripe uh, fruits f at the end of the season. Okay. And it's d you put a bottle. Of, you. It's done with a bottle of wine, and at the end, you puree chestnuts and fold it into it. Yeah, yeah. Some people fold, do it with squash. Everybody has a version of it. Yeah. Well, I used Mafalda's and she cooked it for seven days. Oh my She'd gosh. Turn, the, turn it off at night, turn it on in the morning, and she used aluminum pans, okay. which I thought was yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Because I asked her once, I said, what do you, do you have any new equipment? I was doing an article on equipment. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I have the ones that I have when I got married. And I said, well, do you have anything else? I don't need anything else. They all, they, I can use it them. It works. They right, work. Right, right, right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah. done. I did it. I've got it down to three days. Mm -hmm. 
and I changed it a little. And each year I would go to her and I would have her taste it. And she would say, it's almost there. It's almost <laughs> there. <laughs> you know? She would want you to do four more days if it was no. like <laughs> No, it was all. Now, uh, what, 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 what do you end up with? Is it like a sauce? Is no, it it's a very, there's no sweetening in it. Okay. It's done, it's like, it's black, yeah. literally black. Yeah. And it's used for sweet ravioli that they make. Oh, okay. Or it's made, I, and she used it with her brusadella, which is in the book. Okay, okay. And it's a heavy, heavy, like, cake. Yep, yep. And so I, you t do it in two rolls, and you put the savoir in the middle of it. So it only, it almost becomes a seasoning in of itself. It's not a dish that you would just eat. No, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, you could use it as aside for um, poultry or yeah, yeah yeah well I mean speaking of the recipes that are in the book um, you know we the the book does contain um, some great history you know what you talked about with the the um, the Italian American immigrants coming to work on the canal and at Keith Carr works also some personal stories but then beyond that you move on to almost a, a travel log and and a survey of other great Italian American food in New England, not just right. you know, not just born, not just Cape Cod. Um, how did you pick wh well, where you were going to go? <laughs> well, w the way I picked it was, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, would first of all call the historical societies. Mm -hmm. For instance, I went to Vermont, Barry, Vermont, and I would call. I called the society and I said, I asked the receptionist. I said, Are there any older Italian people living, still living in Barry, because Barry was granite, you know, and people from the north of Italy settled in Barry, okay. and people from the south settled in Rutland because okay. of the marble. Oh, so it okay. Was, it, I found that kind <laughs> wow. of interesting. Wow, yeah. yeah, that's really interesting, yeah, yeah. So northern Italy had the granite and the southern had the marble. Right. And so once they came to the States, they, yeah, all right. So uh, um, I, the woman said, yes, we have a woman right, right here who works here as, as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And so I said, may I speak with her? Yes, her name is Nelda Rossi, and she's, she's a friend of mine today. I, make, I made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. She was 90 and she went to Italy to celebrate her 90th birthday. Now she's 92, I think, yeah. Um, she went to Italy as a 90-year-old. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> she went back to. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so anyway, from there, uh, she, I said, uh, I told her who I was, what I want. Well, I can't talk now. Very abrupt, very, I, call me this afternoon at 3 o'clock. So I called her at 3 o'clock, and then she turned me on to all of these other people in Barry. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing is, like some of the pe women here and men, well, mostly the women, have lived. Her sister in law, Alba Rossi, mm -hmm. is 100 years old. Wow. And I think that there's this, I think it has to do with the family and the support of families mm -hmm. that yep. they can live this yep. long. And the olive oil and the red wine probably doesn't hurt either. <laughs> no, I think, and well, I think it's a lot of home cooking yeah. and not processed foods. And I think there's a lot of other components that are into this. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so who do you feature? Do you have any recipes featured from Barry, Vermont? Oh, the, yes, yeah, yes. Okay. There's a, a one um, that it's Vino de Campo and his name is Campo, and he's 90-something years old. Him and his sister-in-law uh, have a little shop where they make sausages, and they made um, a um, antipasto, which, mm -hmm. and I found, I bought one of the containers, and it's the same recipe that Rose Sorrenti did here. Oh, wow. In who, she was my surrogate mother. Rose was, Rose yeah. Rose Sorrenti. Yeah, and yeah. She, her recipe, and I got her recipe and I printed it just the way she had wrote it. So and it's actually in her handwriting? Handwriting. Oh, that's beautiful. And it says up in the corner, the cost was $45 and it makes 80 quarts or uh -huh, something like uh -huh. that. No, 80. <laughs> eight quarts. Eight quarts, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, now, now the antipasto, it would just be sort of 
mixed in advance. I mean, you know, yes. almost like it was pickled. Yes. Pickle, so it's, it saved it's as like pickles. Pickle. Yeah. Okay. Olive oil yep. and um, a lot of canned things like cauliflower and or you could use fresh cauliflower. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. So the secret to Rose Sorrenti's uh, antipastos in here as well. Yeah. <laughs> and she preserved it and put a. Uh, anchovy or sardine on the top and then preserve oh, it. Oh, okay. So that yeah. sort of salted and flavored the whole thing. That's a great tip. That's a really good one. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. always use anchovies as a, f even in stews, I would throw an anchovy in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now, when I, two of the, the um, stories that popped out as well were about some of the local institutions in Bourne, the Mezzaluna and the Sagamore Inn, and those were two places oh, yeah. that you featured. Um, can, can you tell us a little a, a little story, a recipe about about each of those? Yeah, I have uh, Shirley's recipe for the her sausage, which in fact I just That's made from it the, the other the day. That's the Sagmore Inn. Yeah, okay, the Sagmore yep. Inn. I made it the other day, and uh, it's a very simple sausage. I got ground um, pork, and um, you have to. It can't be ground too fine. Mm -hmm. So I usually grind it myself, or I have the butcher at Whole Foods do it for me. And I said, don't put it on three grinds, but just put it on one or two. And, um, and then she, you take a piece of garlic and smash it, several mm -hmm. pieces, mm -hmm. and tie it in a little bag or a little cheesecloth, yep. and put it in some wine, a cup of wine, Okay. and let it mar macerate overnight. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, you do your, you take your, uh, pork and you put as much of the wine in that has seasoned yeah and I put I think I ch put some fresh sage in it okay and so you're I not getting chunks like, of garlic you're getting no, the garlic getting is infusing flavor. into the wine exactly. yeah oh I love that That's a, I'm gonna <laughs> use that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, now what about the mezzaluna what did you what did you discover there they wrote their stuffed um, shells mm -hmm. with the ricotta cheese yeah, yeah 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 I've had those those are amazing right <laughs> yep now and actually one of the one of the funny um, connections from the book was um, the 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 great cannoli company that you talked about in, Ch oh, yeah. in Chelsea right and that they're sort of like the the standard bearer <laughs> for you know cannoli shells that all you know restaurants they're all use over. They're all over, and as we were doing preparation for our event, we discovered that Market Basket actually carries I them. I know, right? So, so and I, they have I, chips, they, and they have the chips, yes, because right. it's a lot easier to just put a little of the cannoli filling on a chip than it is to try to, to right. try to fill one of those cannolis. So, I was pretty thrilled to know that um, that you know we could, we could get a little slice of something authentically Italian, you know, in, in Market Basket because you wouldn't necessarily expect that. So. Um, so are there any other, uh, what, what's, what's your favorite recipe from this book? Oh, <laughs> I'm all over the place. One of them, well, I learned from my grand, my great uncle, mm -hmm. um, Zio Carabino. I called him Carabin, Carabing. They, everybody called him Carabing, which I thought was a slang for carafoli. Yeah. Well, after I think, uh, well, after my mother died, I, th I didn't see him after. He used to come to 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 our house like maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. He was a chef in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife Tasilla, and I never saw them. At, but he would make a, a a lobster stew with tomatoes, and mm -hmm. it was totally amazing. I didn't eat any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I was a very picky eater. Mm -hmm. But I would dunk the horn bread into the juice, yeah. into the sauce. And is, and that, the, is that the lobster cacciatore that yes, you talked about? Yes, I turned it into yeah, cacciatore, yeah. which is hunter's stew. Yeah. Um, and I added other stuff to it because I forged for my own oysters, which I was out the other day, and and clams, mm -hmm. um, and I just added that to it. Mm -hmm. And it, but through sense memory, I picked that I can I developed that recipe. Yeah. And it wasn't until I took a journey to one of the first time. No, it wasn't the first, but I went just to to psych out my relatives, and I went to the small town of Renazzo, and I found somebody there. Nobody spoke English, and I did find a woman who didn't speak a word of English and she brought pictures she showed me pictures and they were all people from Plymouth mm -hmm. and we had relatives in Plymouth and they used to come 
every so often. Yeah, yeah. And I said, we must be related, you know. Um, but we were in the cemetery. She brought me to the cemetery. And I found, she said, there's Andiamo. There was one more, Carafoli. And it was, in Italy, they put people in vaults. Okay, yeah. With yep. pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. And I almost, I almost fell through the floor, through the ground, <laughs> not the floor. <laughs> um, when I saw it, I, it was just the way I remembered them. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Wow. You know, as, wow. Yeah, yeah. And there they were. They went back to Italy in the same town that yeah, they were born. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I know. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, you, you, you talked about the, the, you know, going to visit those photos. I feel like I really want to mention your donation of beautiful portrait um, f photos of your grandparents, um, Inez and Luigi, correct? Yeah. And, um, and, you know, one thing that I love about that is that the future, you've, you donate them to the Bourne Historical Society, um, and they, they have been hung in the Bourne archives, and they're available for anybody to view. And so that future generations of Carafolis will be able to come visit and, you know, and look upon the, the faces, the familiar faces of, uh, of their ancestors. So you've really well, kind I'm, of provided I'm, that for, for, you know, I'm generations to I'm very honored that they're there because... I didn't know what to do with them, you yeah. know, um, well, they're, and I found a place, and thank you for well, taking them. They're in a place of honor, and, it, and it's really wonderful to, to have them there to document this wonderful history. I mean, this little, little Italy that we had in Bourne um, that, you know, I, I think that I'm, I sort of knew about it. I knew about Louis Market, but learning about it in its full um, you know, uh, richness is, uh, is really, really a treat and was one of the, the most special things about, uh, about reading this book. Um, so I actually bought the book for my, my uh, mother-in-law for Christmas. So where, if, if somebody watching would be interested in getting a copy of the book, what's, what's the best place for them to get it? Well, I mean, if they're out of town, if they're in town, just give me a call and okay. I can get it to them. Yep. Or you can get it on Amazon. On Amazon. Or uh, Titcombe's Bookstore has it. Oh, great. Good, good. Well, and we'll put a link to uh, to our website as well to uh, for a copy of this book. Really, it's a it's a beautiful. Um, I know you probably don't want to brag about it as much as I want to compliment you because it really is just a beautiful memoir, very touching, and um, and and you really talk about very eloquently how food and family ties us to history, not just our personal history, but our roots, our local history, and uh, and it really brought a lot of things together for me in a, in a wonderful way. So. Thank you for writing it, and, uh, <laughs> and thanks for talking about it here with me today. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you again, John, and, and thanks for joining us on A Window to Born, and we'll see you next time.